Okay, guys and gals, we're going to talk about perspective. And we're going to start with one point perspective, which is the easier version. Um, this is also called linear perspective sometimes. You may see that written uh, in other art books if you ever if you ever read about it. So this is a very basic painting, but it does give you the impression that you're going back in the distance. And that's what perspective does in art. When you're working on a two dimensional surface, meaning a flat canvas, a flat piece of paper, perspective is what makes it look like you're taken back into the painting. So it's giving the kind of illusion of three dimensional space going back in the distance. So there's a few terms you need to know about perspective. Number one is the horizon line. And the horizon line is where your sky meets the water or your sky meets the ground. Generally, this happens around eye level. Um, you can look outside and sometimes it's hidden by trees or buildings in front of you. But generally, it's kind of straight ahead where the sky meets the earth is where your horizon line is going to be. So on this painting, I'm going to show you right here with this line, horizon line, very easy on water scenes where the water meets the sky. We also know there are lines that are going to converge to a vanishing point. That's where everything is going and heading towards in a distance. So to make things look realistic, you're going to need your lines to follow a vanishing point. So I have this little dot down here and this vanishing point is somewhere right around where this little guy or girl is walking. So I move my dot, if you can see it up there. The reason the vanishing point goes here, and you guys might already kind of see this, this is where lines are converging for this type of dock. So if I was going to draw a line here, it ends up at that vanishing point. If I'm going to draw another line, let's just make it another color. This one, whoops. Why did that? This line going back towards the dot there. So hopefully this makes sense, everybody. Vanishing point, horizon line, and then the other lines that converge to it. Let's look at another piece of artwork. Here's here's another drawing, um, very much a technical drawing. There's not a whole lot of organic shapes. It's all very much straight lines. So again, see if you can find the vanishing point. Okay. If you found it, perfect. If not, let me show you where this one is. It's right here again, right at the center. Um, and again, we can line up horizon line. If you can see my cursor, I'm not even gonna draw it. It's right here. And then all these other lines are going to converge towards that vanishing point. If you see my cursor, all lining up there, even these telephone poles, it's not making a line, but the tops and the bottoms all kind of converge there. Now, what's really important about these types of drawings, and this is where we get confused sometimes in middle school, is that we can get all this thing in place, but students always have a tendency to draw their vertical lines a little bit crooked. You may have seen artwork where people um, are trying to do this, and then they'll put windows or lines in, and their, their posts will be like, slanted somehow and it makes everything look like it's a little bit off so key to this is anything that's a vertical you must make it vertical so make sure it's like standing straight up and down um, when it's supposed to be the side of a house the window of a house things like that all right let's look at some real art real quick and see if you can figure out vanishing points in this now even in interior scenes you might not see the outside of this building, but there is still a vanishing point going on. Um, if I start to look at the lines where the floor meets the wall, if you could watch my cursor, it would be going this way, imaginary kind of up here. This one's coming up here. So my vanishing point in this is probably gonna be somewhere like right around here. If I took some lines, and I'm going to go ahead and do my line here towards the vanishing point. Another line, let's make a white line from here. I don't know why it keeps doing that, sorry guys. Line here towards that vanishing point. And as you can see, this, even the bed will kind of line up. It's going back in space. Now, not all things are gonna go to a vanishing point. As you can see, some of this furniture is tilted different ways, but generally, things will go towards a vanishing point. A famous work of art, if we look at this, 
We'll draw in the horizon line again. You guessed it. If you see the sky out here, the horizon line has to be somewhere across the back. Maybe it's a little bit further down. Let's make that a little heavier so you can see it. There's my horizon line. Um, let's see where some, now I don't have a lot of straight lines in this. I have some curves, but I can still figure it out that way too, because if you really look, these are lining up as well. If I'm looking at these curves, look at what I have going on here. I've got that line and it looks like I have another one somewhere over here. And they're all kind of going back to where would be a central vanishing point, probably somewhere around here. Whoops, if I move the artwork. Vanishing point. Why is it not drawing? There it is right there. Okay, so there's also will be some lines going here. Now, sometimes we do this uh, unconsciously, but when you get really, really good at art, um, like these master artists do, they do it very, very consciously. Um, it's very deliberate because when you use these lines, it leads your eye through the artwork into something important. And right here, it's these main figures. Everybody's kind of leading this way. You can also work with other curved lines. Um, once you understand how things go towards a vanishing point, you can work and you can change the shape of your line. So even up here, we have a horizon line somewhere back here, vanishing point somewhere hidden behind the trees. But we could also say this line maybe kind of coming this way, uh, part of this line going this way. And you can curve your your lines just as long as it's larger towards the foreground in the front and it gets smaller in the background. Okay, we're working with one point perspective, but just to show you how advanced this stuff gets, um, we there is two point perspective. And that's when you're looking at a scene where things, there's two vanishing points. As you can see in this artwork, there's a vanishing point on the right corner and there's a vanishing point that's gonna be over here on the left corner. Now there's still one horizon line between the two, but as you can see, all these lines would be going back towards one point here. Once we're in the center, they're gonna go this point here. And this is what a finished artwork would be doing the same thing. As you can see, lines going off in the distance, a vanishing point would be way off of the artwork somewhere there and then going this way. But we're not gonna worry about that yet. What we're gonna worry about is one point perspective. So um, next step for you guys is to look at the real basic drawing kind of rectangular uh, prisms using one point perspective. And then you can go ahead and, and preview some of the other videos I posted to do your final um, more advanced drawing. What I would suggest is pick one that's really interesting to you and kind of go through it step by step, pause the video and draw along with the artist. That'll kind of help you as you go. Um, and then we'll come back to adding all the shading. And if you want to add a little bit of color, you can do that at the end. This may take longer than win one week. So we'll see where everybody is at um, the following Wednesday. If you're not done, we can extend the time a little bit because I'd really like your final drawings to turn out really nice, something for you guys to hold on to and keep in your portfolio um, until we get back into the classroom. Okay, guys, have a great day. I will talk to you soon.